Okay, AQA, Geography, GCSE, Want to Know, Paper Wallet, Case Study, Physical, um, probably one of the most studied rivers in the British Isles. This is the River Tees from Source to Mouth. The AQA wants you to know a river valley in the UK to identify its major landforms of erosion and deposition. So let's get started. Here it is. The River Tees runs from a source way inland near a place called Cowgill, just above Cowgill Reservoir, all the way down through Barnard Castle, meandering down out into the North Sea. I tried to colour coordinate this resource, which you can find in the link down underneath the video. So, in the upper course in blue, we have vertical erosion that gives us interlocking spurs. We also have vertical down cutting because the river has got a steep gradient, it's down cutting, giving us waterfalls. And the UK is mostly waterfall a waterfall known as high force waterfall and um, here the thing about waterfalls remember is less resistant rock with more resistant rocks so are waterfalls of and you'll see in a moment undercuts we're talking about gorge etc etc this one's 21 meters high the hard rock is called windsill the soft rock is a sandstone and a, and a mix of shale Still then, just downstream for high walls, you get not quite one vertical step, you therefore get what we call uh, rapids, and the low force are rapids. In the midsection, we have lateral erosion, the river's now are able to erode sideways as well, and that begins to give us meanders, and we've got some meanders at Barnard Castle. Remember, a meander has erosion on the outside, but deposition on the inside, so in fact, it's a balance. And finally, in the lower section of the river, we have uh, meanders to Oxbow Lake, stamp near a place called Yarm, and then start to have depositional features. Levees on the side because of flooding, and then you have the floodplain itself, and then finally you have an estuary at the mouth of the Tees. Okay, let's have a look in detail. There are some interlocking spurs way up in the northern section, just near high, up north of uh, Calcutta Reservoir. Again, the river is able to snake sideways, but because it's very steep, its velocity is quite high, so it cuts vertically downwards. Where, where water goes over a very resistant outcrop of rock, windsill, and is then descends at high speed into a less resistant rock, sandstones, then it's going to erode it, giving you a lovely waterfall. 21 meters high. Every now and again during the summer, you get people, teenagers, jumping off here, and they pretty much wish they hadn't. Okay, middle section, therefore, here, look, it's a meander. The inside of a meander, very inefficient shape, lots of friction, slows the water down, means there's not enough energy to move material, it deposition. Whereas on the outside, where the foul wave is migrating, that fast water is eroding the bank, giving you a steeper cliff, the classic asymmetric shape, which you can find in your textbooks. And where do we find them on the tees? We find them near Barnard Castle, and there's an example of some. Finally, the mouth of the river, we still have meandering. But these meanders now are beginning to cut off where the water says, I can't be bothered to go all the way around here. I'm going to go across there, especially during a flood save, when there's lots of high amounts of energy in the river. It says, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go around this corner and then stop there. I'm going to carry on, and it does, and it causes a cutoff. Once you have water flowing over the land, you've got erosion, it starts to cut itself a channel. Next time there's a flood and the water can fill that channel, it will fill the channel, cutting off and giving you an oxbow lake. Um, and so you see that, then you also see these things, floodplains, and just about make out levees. When the river starts to flood, oh, it goes over the river banks, it slows down immediately, starts to drop material as soon as it slows down, building up a nice little bank, and then the floodplain near the side. I like the idea that the river, by creating a levee, is deliberately meaning, making itself bigger to be able to hold that flood water if it was to come again. The river is smart, it's building a larger channel capacity. Obviously, humans can then reinforce and build the levees to try and keep the water in the river. But of course, that means that that depositional material doesn't go, uh, and water doesn't go to the lovely floodplain. And then finally, at the mouth of the river, an estuary. Remember, an estuary is where salt water comes in at high tide and then goes out and fresh water from the river goes in. Really rich, niche conditions for wild wildlife. But this case study is about landforms and nothing else. It's a classic case study. There's your questions. Your textbook will take you through the detail. The link to this resource is at the bottom of the video. Good luck.